Friends, have you ever made the common human mistake of judging a book by its cover? I certainly have. For example, when I stumbled upon this book, How to Avoid Huge Ships, I thought to myself, what a useless waste of paper. Boy, was I wrong. It ended up coming in handy one day when I found myself surrounded by a bunch of huge ships coming straight at me. Boy, am I glad I read that book. And you would have thought that after this, I would have learned my lesson and I would no longer be judging books by their cover. But unfortunately, I did not. And it happened again a few weeks ago. My producer sent me a film entitled The Amazing Bulk and I did a video reacting to it for my Facebook page. And looking back, I'm just so angry at my past self, you know, because all I did was watch it one time and that was enough for me to label it as the worst piece of third rate garbage I'd ever watched. I didn't know it was gonna be that miserably unwatchable. What I didn't expect was for that movie to stay with me. Right in here. As the weeks passed, I went through a roller coaster of emotion thinking about this film. I went from appalled to mildly amused to moderately appreciative, all the way to infatuated. Infatuated and ever thankful for the fact that this wacky guy, who also worked on Mystic Pizza starring Julia Roberts, has gifted us with the impeccable, incroyable, magnifique, beautiful sensation that is the amazing bulk. So I want you to come along down memory lane and witness this journey that I was blessed to take. So grab a friend, grab a snack, and let's watch the amazing bulk together. Right after a word from today's sponsor. By the way, it's a really good sponsor, so check it out. Hey friends, coming to you live from my adorable home gym. I don't know if you guys know this about me, but I am quite <laughs> worky outy. <laughs> I'm down here pretty much every day doing some sort of physical activity. In fact, you know my favorite physical activity? Cartwheels. I just love, I'm obsessed with cartwheels. I can't stop doing them. Check it out. But you know what I don't love when I'm doing exercises and cartwheels? I don't love having to wear big, bulky, annoying, corded headphones. Which is why I'm absolutely obsessed with today's sponsor, Raycon. That's right, friends. Raycon's everyday earbuds look, feel, and sound better than ever. With optimized gel tips for the perfect in-ear fit, these earbuds are the absolute most comfortable that I've ever used, and they will not budge. Trust me. They offer eight hours of play time and a 32 hour battery life. But the best part about all this is that they are priced incredibly. So you get quality audio at about half the price of, you know, other brands. <laughs> In addition to cartwheels, I also um, lay down a lot and read audiobooks. And I have been absolutely loving my Raycon earbuds every night for just laying in bed. You can lay on your pillow with an earbud in and you don't even feel it because they're so small and compact and secure. Let's cut on over to Desk Me to let you know how you can get your hands on a pair of Raycon earbuds. Thanks, Jim Me. One thing that Jim Me forgot to tell you guys is that while Raycon has made quite a name for themselves in the, you know, audio world, they also have a brand new line of Raycon Home and Raycon PowerTech products. Things like the magic 180 degree charging cable or the very sleek faucet filter which can filter out all the heavy metals and chlorine and all that garbage that's in your tap water. So if you're interested in checking out Raycon and all of their wonderful products, which you should be, they are having an early Black Friday sale, I'm thrilled to announce. The sale is across the entire site, 20% off all products and 50% off select products. So what are you waiting for, friends? Get an early start on all the sales that occur this time of year by shopping Raycon's early Black Friday sale today. All you gotta do is go to buyraycon.com slash Jamie, J-A-I-M-E, to get 20 to 50% off site-wide. Or you can just click the link in my description box. Again, that's buyraycon.com slash Jamie to get 20 to 50% off site-wide. Thanks again, Raycon, for helping me go to sleep every night reading an audiobook without disturbing my husband and for sponsoring a portion of today's video. And now back to the show. Hey kids, we're back. Quick plot synopsis of The Amazing Bulk. Henry Hank Howard works as a scientist in a military lab, trying to create a superhuman formula, but with little success. He is also in love with the daughter of his boss, a general. In an effort to earn his approval to marry his daughter, Henry tests the formula on himself, inadvertently transforming himself into a purple rage monster and leaving him at the mercy of those who wish to exploit his newfound power. Sound familiar? It's a little bit like The Incredible Hulk, if you hadn't gathered that yet, but way better. So heads up friends, this entire film was filmed in front of a green screen and is all CGI. I don't even know if CGI is the word. It's all like cartoon. Sometimes it looks 3D, sometimes it 
doesn't. Apparently the director didn't even hire a 3D artist. He just found random free stock footage on the internet. In fact, I recognized one of them because I've used it before. Long story long, the point is it's so incredible and it makes me feel like maybe my lifelong dream of creating a short film on a $9 budget is possible after all. So the opening scene of this movie to my utter shock and surprise is one that I actually can't show on YouTube. <laughs> Though it's completely cartoony and CGI, it is still quite violent and I don't want to get demonetized, but to really drive the point home, I want to travel back in time with you to the first time I watched this movie. Oh my God. <laughs> I thought this was a kid's movie. Yeah, it's weird. Basically this scantily clad hussy is walking around the city at night in the dark and this bad guy comes up and unalives her. The amazing bulk does show up. We get to see him right off the bat because this scene is actually a flashback. But unfortunately he was too late to save the woman. However, he does appear to get the bad guy. The only thing I don't like about this movie is that they really shorted us on that running scene. I could have watched that for a whole nother 15 seconds. Friends, let's jump back in time yet again to the first moment I saw the detectives arrive to the crime scene. I never saw purple blood before. Yeah, well, this whole crime scene is one big mystery now, ain't it? Is it common for detectives to wear like a shiny gold suit? I've never seen such a thing. No, past Jamie, it's not. It's also not common for detectives to contaminate crime scene evidence with their bare hands, but then again, this movie is not common. the world's fastest ambulance. Ooh, Comic Sans. I like Comic Sans font because it says this is a scary movie, but we still like to party, you know, like a tuxedo t-shirt. Very astute observation, past Jamie. So then we meet Hank and his coworker, Sam, lamenting over the fact that they've spent years trying to perfect the serum, but unfortunately it keeps turning blue. I just can't understand why the serum keeps turning blue. You know, friends, they say hindsight's 2020, and I just can't help but look back at my past self resentful. I wish I had appreciated how incredible this scene is, instead of nitpicking silly things like the audio. Four years of my life I've spent on this damn experiment and I have nothing to show for it. You guys couldn't afford a boom mic? I don't think I've ever seen a budget this low where not only could they not afford a set, which is understandable, but they couldn't even afford a microphone. <laughs> How could I split hairs during such an emotional scene? We're dabbling in God's backyard. Damn it, I'm sick of failure. <laughs> this is incredible. <laughs> It feels like a play. Just like a really weird, quite violent play. So friends, yet again, the serum was a failure, this time disintegrating a cartoon rat. Thankfully though, Sam's girlfriend, Hannah, shows up to lighten the mood and to take him to lunch. Sam, I'm taking him to lunch. I'll bring him back soon. Oh my God, look at this car. <laughs> look, I'm sorry about earlier. Uh -huh. Oh my God. And I was right. The car was incredible. Almost as incredible as the building it was driving past. Toys and games with a Z. You guys know I love when things end with a Z instead of an S. Bet you can't catch me. Yeah, I bet he can't either because you're running in place. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I am really looking forward to dinner tonight. So as you just heard, Hannah and Hank will be having dinner that evening at Hannah's father's house. My past self was eager to see this scene as I knew Hank would be asking Hannah's father for his daughter's hand in marriage. But unfortunately, I had to sit and wait while they tested yet another batch of serum. Ooh, chemistry montage. I could just hear the director being like, do some chemistry stuff. Squirt the syringe into a beaker. All right, guys, moment of truth. Will the superhuman serum work on the cartoon rat this time? Oh, oh. <gasps> oh. darn it. Another disintegrated rat. No more failures! So Hank heads to his girlfriend's father's home. It's a beautiful home, complete with an extravagant fountain out front, a stunning pool in the back. You can tell Hannah's father has a lot of money. He even has his own library where he likes to go and have chats with himself. I hate dust. I don't want it building up in my home. I too talk to myself in my library about book dust. Hi, Daddy. You let dust build up, and before you know it, you've got an army of dust bunnies plotting to take over. Beautiful flowers. <laughs> Like, editor couldn't even leave a beat after he said that. You let dust build up and you got an army of dust buddies ready to take over beautiful flowers. <laughs> well, friends, as we know, Hank desperately wanted to ask General Darwin for his daughter's hand in marriage, but unfortunately he was thwarted. Actually, no, it's not about the experiment. It's about the- Wait, uh... 
Don't speak. There could be spies listening. Let's go somewhere private. Follow me. Yes, let us retreat to the private wine cellar where we can talk about the serum while walking in place. I need results, Hank. Stop stalling. I'd like to talk about Hannah. <laughs> what about her? <laughs> they had to walk in place. They had to walk in place for the whole thing. You think I want it? Deadbeat son-in-law. I want to marry her. You knock up my little girl. Is that it, huh? Of course not. Why is this movie so violent? That's right, friends. It wasn't the right time yet. The engagement would have to wait while Hank focused all his efforts into perfecting the serum. Now, kids, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking to yourself, where's the villain? Every superhero movie has a villain. My past self was thinking the exact same thing. So you can imagine how delighted I was when we finally got to meet the evil scientist, Dr. Kant Love, as well as his crazy weird girlfriend with a wiggy wiggy wig. <laughs> Bumblebee, I'm bored. I think this girl might be the best actress I've ever seen. This is Oscar worthy. That does not work on me. Oh, that's right. I forgot. There's nothing going on downstairs. I'm sorry. <laughs> what is happening? Little did I know it was about to get much weirder. And how many times must I tell you? to gyrate in front of the gods. So as you saw, Dr. Kantlove does not like his security guards oogling his bride. And one of them paid the ultimate price when he made a goofy clown face at the evil doctor and his fate was not one I was prepared to witness. Oh my god, he's a Skeletor. <gasps> so after meeting the villains of the story, I was so thrilled to see that Hank slash Henry was finally about to propose to Hannah on a cartoon subway. I know we've been through a lot over the past four years. And, uh, well, uh... <gasps> the mugger from earlier! Hank, look out! <laughs> Hank, look out! Hank, look out! The only other human being on the entire bus, and they didn't notice him. Look, there's money in my wallet. Just take it and leave. It's your own sweet thing. Why don't you give it to me before I rattle your ears? Oh god, I'm so scared. Here's my $5 Charming Charlie earrings. Now, I don't think you're in any position to tell me what to do. I don't think I've ever seen a mugger rest his chin on his victim's shoulder before, but there's a first time for everything. Here. <laughs> yes, get him, Henry. That was the best reaction to finding a diamond ring that I could have ever asked for. Remember that evil smile, friends, because that mugger, he comes back. But first, it was time for our protagonist to make yet another attempt at the superhuman serum, and I watched with bated breath. It's another labby montage where we do labby stuff, and we do some science. Here's nothing. Oh, please don't show it. What kind of person would just be like, I'll be the first human trial for this drug that's been disintegrating rats? Yeah. yeah. Oh, look at the table rattling everywhere. It's so realistic. <gasps> there you have it, guys. He became the amazing bulk. He's bulky. You know what I mean? I do know what you mean, past Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> so Henry is now the amazing bulk. Bulky as can be. And he happens upon that smiley mugger from the cartoon Subway, just as he is committing the heinous crime that we saw in the opening of the film. But we already knew, didn't we, friends, that the bulk was too late. Why do they show his butt? <laughs> I can't take it seriously now. How I was not crying, lamenting over the dead hussy. Just watching this movie as though it were a stupid piece of goofy garbage is beyond me. <laughs> well, friends, during the altercation between the bulk and the mugger, Henry's wallet was left behind at the scene. So the investigators show up to his home to ask him a few questions, and I watched with a racing heart, terrified that our hero would be falsely accused and arrested. Wake up, Henry. It's time for the donut ham hamburger. <laughs> Who is it? Well, it ain't Ed McMahon. <laughs> Oh, no. I can't believe I scoffed at the most incredible film of our generation. Look at me. Look at me with my smug little smile just making a mockery of priceless art. I'm ashamed. You don't ever see the regular Hulk's butt, right? Our story took a turn for the worse here when the detectives pulled out their weapons and attempted to thwart the amazing Hulk. What the hell is that? Well, it ain't Barney the Purple Dinosaur. I watched on the edge of my seat praying for his safe escape. This Hulk's a big sissy. He keeps running away. <laughs> Unfortunately, I can't show the shootout again because of YouTube uh, policy, but I can show you that the scene ended in tragedy. Look out! Lisa! Oh, 
Oh, that was sad. I'm sorry. I'll have to let past me take this one. So Henry turns back into his normal naked self um, and he gets captured by the detective who takes him to this like government facility. <laughs> this government facility where the general slash his girlfriend's father is there waiting for him. Before we administer the antidote, there was something you must do for your country. You're the only hope mankind has of surviving. So it'd be wise to get serious. God, say it, don't spray it, Mr. General. So General Darwin had a proposition for Henry now that he was a superhuman purple gorilla. He wants Henry to help him stop Dr. Kantlove from blowing up the moon. <laughs> we believe he is sending a rocket to the moon and plans to blow it up. Even past me was able to recognize that Henry slash Hank the Amazing Bulk was the perfect man for the job. Yes, big Barney the Purple Blob to the rescue. So the climax of the story approaches as Henry gets thrown from a helicopter? Yeah, he got thrown from a helicopter. He lands somewhere on the property of Dr. Kantlove, running in place through endless foggy darkness in a golf course. To be honest, I was as confused then as I am now. This is a very long journey he's taking. Why is he on a golf course? Is that a leprechaun? <laughs> what is happening? So he finally makes it to the castle and he has to turn back into the amazing bulk and fight the guards. <laughs> Run away, you dumb dumb. <laughs> Why did he <laughs> Why didn't he run away? Hey, look, that weird wig girl's back. Now, friends, I'm not gonna show you what weird wiggy girl did when she approached the amazing bulk. It was quite appalling, and it can't be shown on YouTube, but it does perhaps confirm my sentiments from earlier. You know how I feel like wrote this? <laughs> A really, really old pervert. Probably but it's still the greatest movie of all time. So Wiggy McGee here removes her sleep mask and realizes that she is in the presence of greatness. The amazing bulk right there in the flesh. I was shocked at what happened next. What have you done to your face? I love it! <laughs> <laughs> That's what you get, you gross weirdo in your wig. I'll let that one slide. Well, friends, the time had come. Dr. Kantlove and the Amazing Bulk came face to face for the most epic battle in superhero movie history. No, please, no! <laughs> Again, he could have ran away. The mad scientist who knows science stuff and can create missiles didn't think to run away. This is not my favorite movie. <sighs> Mine too. Well, my comrades, it's time for a plot twist. A plot twist so twisty, it'll make your head spin. Don't miss it when we come back. Hey friends, we're back. And it's time for the 360 McTwisty plot twist that past me never saw coming. Come in, do you read me? Look, I've eliminated Cutlove and his men. Now come and pick me up, will ya? What? <laughs> What's the doctor's name? Cut love, cut love. So it looks like the general has betrayed poor Hank slash Henry and was just using him to kill the evil doctor and is now launching missiles at the castle where Henry still is. And you know what that means, friends. It was time for yet another crazy long scene of the bulk running away all over God's green earth, passing creatures of all shapes, sizes, and walks of life. We're gonna go this time, bulky. Another golf course. Is that Robin Hood? <laughs> Is that a gecko typing a letter that says, I am a gecko? <laughs> you guys, what's happening here right now? I actually don't know. But what I do know is that Hank slash Henry made it back safe to Hannah. Hank, you're alive. <laughs> oh yeah, he made it back to Hannah. <laughs> Hope the general doesn't find out. You, it can't be, you're dead. Daddy! I watched, petrified with fear, hoping and praying that General Darwin would finally pay for what he had done, but I couldn't believe it. From what I remember, I was I was stunned and speechless. <laughs> Did you see those cartoon bodies hit the ground? That was the best fall of any movie I've ever seen. That was a pretty good fall. But also very emotional. But nowhere near as emotional as what came to follow. A scene so unexpected I could hardly bear to hear the news. <gasps> 
They died? This is a graveyard, right? It was. It was a graveyard. I can't believe I even questioned it. You can clearly tell by this pure white engraving and aerial font on Hank's headstone. I was devastated. Devastated by the loss of a true hero. He died? Where was the amazing bulk on that one? Oh boy, here comes that weirdo detective. Hey. Huh. I hope you're in hell. Oh yeah, I forgot he doesn't like Henry because Henry accidentally smashed his partner with that car. Well, drink this. <laughs> you're gonna pee on someone's grave. But just then, a glimmer of hope stirring beneath the dirt. <gasps> Bulk? Bulky? Is that you? <laughs> yes! The Bulk is alive! The amazing Bulk is alive after all. That is quite amazing. <laughs> and it was at that moment that I finally realized what I still know in my heart today, which is that the amazing Bulk will go down in history as the most moving superhero masterpiece of all time. Oh my god, I can't play this character anymore! <laughs> I'm dying inside. But seriously, listen. Listen to me, Smalls. This actually is the greatest movie on earth, okay? From the smiley mugger who rested his chin on Hank's shoulder to the cartoon rat to the toys and games with a Z, my life is now complete. In all seriousness, can somebody please help me make a movie like this? Like a fully green screened movie where nobody can act, the plot is ripped off, but we have a story to tell? It would be my greatest dream. I wanna check the IMDB page and like see what I can find out so that I too can make a flick like this, you know? So the budget was 14,000 doll hairs. Let's go! <laughs> But how do you do it? How does one make their own film, you know? Do you like post a job on Staff Me Up or something and say you need a camera crew? Is that it? What if they're not good? Where do you find the actors? I was really hoping to reach out to the director of this film, Louis Schoenbrunn, Schoenbrunn. I tried to find him on Instagram. He has several accounts. All of them have either zero or only one photo. And only this one had comments from people who shared the same feelings that I had. I've watched The Amazing Bulk and I have to say that the film is a masterpiece. The effects, the casting, the drama, it's all perfect. And I don't forget the one hour and 15 minutes because it was the funniest time I've ever had. The last 15 minutes are like a drug trip without the drugs. Best B movie that you could watch. See, these people know what's up. Not like these dweebs on IMDb that left one star reviews. One out of 10, disgusting. This is the worst thing I've ever seen and I'm not even being hyperbolic. Everything is shot in front of a green screen or they use some stock animation like a microscope going right into the camera. Watching this reminded me of the first couple days after I tried to quit heroin. Oh. Gosh, the reviews are literally either one out of 10 or 10 out of 10. You guys already know which side I'm on. Thank you guys so much for being here. This was an incredible journey. Isn't that right past me? I gotta go try and erase my own memory and unsee the entire movie that I just saw. Subscribe if you want, if you like all forms of film, good and bad, and you like to see people make fun of said films. Above the belt, of course. I love you, friends, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out!